so we had a uh, opening day Saturday. Both our boys did. Football or is back. All three of our boys did. Yeah, yeah. On, that time uh, of year. Uh, this past weekend, how was it? how was it for you guys? How was Salina flag football season? You know, outside of it just being overwhelmingly hot. Um, yeah. It was great. What time are y'all's games? Are they in the morning? Uh, so our first one was nine, and our second one was noon. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we play first thing in the morning. Yeah. It's either eight thirty or nine thirty all year. My my nipples are still recovering from that <laughs> sweaty mess that I was. <laughs> <laughs> my nipples are still recovering. Literally, I was working in the garage yesterday, and I had to take my shirt off because <laughs> they hurt so bad. Because I sweat so much coaching and it's funny like all the players out there you know shirts are completely dry all the other coaches (laughs) shirts completely dry (laughs) and Tyler (laughs) what is wrong with y'all I'm literally drenched in sweat it's like a wet t-shirt contest Uh, and I got these white jerseys this coach's shirt oh bro but you're the head you're the head man aren't you oh yeah so you got all the stress and I'm and I'm that coach too the the parents and media they come after you if you don't win so I'm doing I'm that coach that's doing the Dion stride chasing my kid down the field (laughs) screaming and (laughs) arms out fist bumping and that's like the Dad that we played that dude it was yeah by the way before we get to mine how was Rocco that was his first first yeah, experience yeah yeah, yeah. What, it was did... it was his first one I was a little bit worried uh a little well, a little bit worried because I mean all we do is play football at the house mm-hmm. loves it loves it and then we get into like this organized like game where it's like okay hey here's the play dive right dive left <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to figure out rights and lefts, right? And, so, and, and just <laughs> if you don't know, we're talking we're talking about literally five year olds, five year olds playing, playing flag football flag for the first football. time. Yeah, <laughs> yep. So five on five, and uh, but it was great, man. Honestly, he did good. He had a I don't know what the field length is, but he had uh, a long touchdown uh, and pulled a bunch of flags. So he, I was. That's impressive. Really, yeah, it was good. It was really, really to be able good. To pull flags at five. That's impressive. Because practice did not. <laughs> lead me to believe that would happen <laughs> <laughs> what's his uh what's his like get after it me- meter like is he does he have is he tenacious yeah. is he kind of just like eh, whatever yeah, yeah is he-, he he is right and and he and my older son um are wired different so uh my older son luca he started kindergarten as well but he was he was he's always been a little bit timid mm-hmm. it's changing now um, which I have a hard time with sometimes because it's that like that young, that new young, like I'm going to celebrate after every single play. And I'm like, bro, tone it down. Act <laughs> like you've been there before. <laughs> but like, I also love that because like he's, he's seeing it. He's seeing growth. He's seeing like progress. Um, but he, it, Rocco is just wired different than him a little mm-hmm. bit. Like he's our gritty, tough, like a little bulldog. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it was funny and obviously it was 9 a.m. So the light, but when the lights came on, he definitely was different than he was in practice. Like oh, really? practice, He wants to kind of mess around and joke and not listen. And it's like ADD all over the place. He's right? got the Allen Iverson approach. Which I guess we're talking man. about practice. Practice? Man. <laughs> you're talking about. So yeah, he, I mean, he did good. And, um, and you could tell he's competitive too. Um, that's good. He, Cause he, that's hard. You can't really teach no, that. No. Yeah. Cause like he was mad because like he came off the field, he missed a flag um, on one of them, and I didn't say anything to him. And he came off the field, and he was like, wouldn't talk. Really? And he's like, I'm like, okay. He it it, it correlated to him in his mind, mm-hmm. like, okay, I, I should have done better, which was which was interesting. How do you coach him? Do you are you like hard on him? Do you kind of just let him play? I'm harder on him. Yeah, yeah, I'm harder on him. Luca is uh, is more. He responds to like positive encouragement, like, mm-hmm. "Hey, dude, that was awesome, dude." He he responds better to that, whereas he'll kind of shut down if you get on him. Yeah. Uh, whereas Rocco, it's like kind of crack the whip and like keep him in line, and he stays in. He stays like, "Okay, I can't just he mess needs, around." He needs parameters. He does. He, needs he does. He needs kind of the guidance, and he's like developmentally just a little bit slower than the kids his age. Um, and he's kind of always in like his sister is. His twin sister. She's, she's night, like 13. Night and day, right? So he's uh, he's catching up, but so you've got to kind of guide him where to yeah. go for sure. Well, he's a good athlete. I've seen him I think so. run yeah. around and catch a little bit. He's a good yeah. athlete. Yeah, you know, he's got – he still doesn't – he still doesn't understand what the like – all right, I'm going to 
I've got six gears and I don't need to just use three of them. Like yeah. I can use all of them. Right. And so the game was the first time I actually saw that. Like actually, okay, he opened up. Like he really did it. So it was fun. It was it was fun. a lot of fun and like you you just afterwards he was just like on fire and yeah. he was just like so pumped. So it was it was fun. So you're telling me that you coach your two sons differently. Yes. What a what a concept. Crazy. So you understand your child. <laughs> And you coach them the way that they need to be coached, as opposed Crazy. to no, this is the way I am, and I'm going to coach everybody yeah. the same. You you need to get in line, <laughs> boy. Which is again, yeah. that's more work on you. But it is. Guess think, what? That's what parenting. That's yeah. what you signed up for. Yeah, but but it's 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 no different than than at home. You're just kind of carrying yeah. it now over to the field, and and then as a dad too, you've also because I want to be harder on my kids mm -hmm. than I am any of the other kids. And you've got to, as a coach in this realm, right, is like you've got to kind of back off of that too. Yeah. You can't be like, I want my kids to be the example. I want them to like, okay, if the coach's kid does it, then we should probably do it. Um, so I've got to catch myself at times being too hard on them. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I think that I'm doing a fairly good job of like, they're five <laughs> and they're eight. Like, uh, most important is I want these kids to be excited to come to practice. Yeah. I want them to be super pumped to go to the game. Like I want them to feel the emotions of winning and losing. Cause that's life and they need to learn those things. Um, but at the same time, like at this age, so many kids get run off, especially in the area that we're at, which I think you're about to talk about mm. a little bit. It's super intense. So you could have a kid that's, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that maybe isn't there athletically, developmentally yet. Mm -hmm. and But if you run him off because it's too serious and, you know, you berate him for mistakes and stuff like that, then, like, what if he is, like, a late bloomer and at, like, 14, 15 transitions into this unbelievable athlete but yeah. hates the game yeah. because he had a bad coach in flag football? I mean, look at, look at a lot of professionals – I mean, yeah. not maybe not the majority, but mm -hmm. there's a good handful that they never played till their senior year in high school. Yeah, you know, they never really got playing time. They were Division two guys, uh -huh. and they just bloomed. So you're exactly like you kill their spirit at yeah. nine. Yeah. What did you just prevent yeah. from happening? Yeah. And and you said something a second ago that struck with me. You know, before I before my son was old enough to play, you know, organized sports, I'd always look at those parents that were super into it, and be like, and I would judge them, and be like. What, what are they doing? Like, it's the, they're, these are kids. Relax. Until yeah. my son start. It's a weird. It is. It's a weird competitiveness that crops uh -huh. up. Uh -huh. So my five-year-old plays soccer, and I catch myself being super hard on him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm obviously I'm nice to all the other kids and encouraging, yeah. but with my son, I'm really hard on him. Yeah. And I'm just catching myself, and I'm thinking, dude, that, what kind of ego yeah. is that? It's, it's almost like it's in a weird way, and I hate to admit this. It's embarrassing to admit this. But it's almost like his play is a reflection of me. Yeah. And I hate that I have that mentality that it's like if he's, if he's not very good, yeah. that means I'm not very good. That's right. It doesn't, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, but it's this weird ego that I, that I get when he's playing. You remember, too, all the kids you played with mm -hmm. that their dad was the coach. Yeah. Right? It, there, was, there was always the coach's kid. Right. And there was, it was always something a little different about mm -hmm. that kid, at least in my experience. Like, they were, they were always good. They were never, like, the best on the team. Right. But, like, there was always some sort of issue. Like, he was always running more than everybody mm -hmm. else. Oh, and yeah. I always felt like that kid always hated yes. the game. And I saw this resentment towards his dad, our coach, it was just different, right? Like they always seemed to like mouth off to their dad. They mm -hmm. always seemed like there was just this deal like where I didn't feel like they really enjoyed the game like the rest of the kids. Yeah. Because think about it, like some of these dads and, and I'm and I'm guilty of it too, is and I this is something that I had a conversation with my wife about is that like I almost don't want to coach because I would rather be my son's fan than his coach. So that when we get in the car, there's no, like, there's, 
it's hard to turn on and turn off yeah. coach versus dad when you're there. And it's like, I can't believe that you did that in practice. You need to run. You need to be the example. You need to, and then you're just like wearing them out all mm -hmm. the time when the other kids, it's like, all right, I'm at practice. Even if coach yells at me, but then I get home and then I've got the safe place with my parents. Yeah. Like coaches, kids don't have that. So I just think if you are a coach out there for your kids, whether it be cheer, basketball, soccer, football, whatever, is be very intentional about, hey, when it's time to coach, it's time to coach. When it's time to be a parent, it's time to be yeah. a parent. Yeah, that's the, the the short year that I've been coaching my son. There's been a lot of evolutions in my mind, exactly what you're talking about. Number one is the ego, which mm -hmm. is if he doesn't play well, then I suck. Mm -hmm. And number two is exactly what you said, which is I, I, I'm the same way with you. Like I would, would almost just rather be a fan yeah. rather than his coach because you don't get to appreciate it as much it's a different yeah. perspective yeah. but the realization i've come to is well this is part of how i feed my community this is part of how i be a leader in the community is i'm getting enough chance to impact eight other five-year-olds yeah you know for that short amount of time that i get them i'm able to be a positive impact on them. so that's the way i think about it and i'm sure you that's exactly what you think too percent. which is yes i'm sacrificing a little bit because i don't get to that same perspective with my son but at the same time, what am I gaining? Which is I get to be a positive impact on eight, eight other kids. kids, right? Exactly, right. And 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 what, you know my my proudest moment, and you know I'm sure every coach can relate. I'm sure you've had this exact thing happen. You know, a a, a mom came up to me after the soccer season last year, and she said her son, he, who'd never played soccer before, I don't know what I'm doing out there, but I'm enthusiastic. I'm positive. I love this kid. Like he's yeah. a great kid. So. That's what she was appreciative more than yeah. she said. He looked forward to coming to every practice, yeah. every game. I loved hearing that feedback yeah. because that's what it's really about at five. A million is, percent. is I've never done this before. You know, was he one of the best players on the team? Obviously not. He'd never done it before, mm -hmm. but he had a great experience because as a coach, you have the ability to feed into that kid yeah. as opposed to killing it. Dude, and that's and that's it. And and when I would fight back, because I always joke, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I was voluntold to be the head coach for both my kids. Teams, and that's how right? it was for me, right? Nobody yeah. else wanted to do it. So I just yeah. I said, yeah, I'll do it. And and so I and I always give Tiffany a bad time. And she's like, listen, like you have the ability to impact so many kids. And look, with your history and playing football, like who better to do that? Yeah. Like to go out and like impact these kids. And, and my perspective is a little different. You get some of these other coaches and in the small football town that I, that we live in is like crazy intense. Mm -hmm. Like for five-year-olds, like there was this like email war last year <laughs> that one of the kinder coaches, the kinder teams don't go to the playoffs just cause it's like, okay, you guys played for eight weeks. Yeah. Plenty. You right. got plenty, right? Yeah. Who cares about playoffs? Yeah. Like it's, it's, and some of these parents lost their minds. Like, what are we teaching these kids? They need to be in the playoffs. Like, that, that's all they want. I'm like, that's not all they want. Like, <laughs> the biggest decision they're going to make is, do I have blueberry waffles or chocolate chip waffles this morning? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. all they care about. Like, yep. it's, it, is it about you or is it about the kids? It's, a lot of times about the parent. <laughs> 100%. And it's like these, these dads that maybe played a year of high school varsity football and maybe played special teams a little bit that have the Microsoft tablets around their neck. They've got a yeah. film crew on the field. They've got like all the bells and whistles. Their kids are all fitted. And it's like, you described perfectly the team we played <laughs> on Saturday. I mean, literally, and you know what I was blown away with too, by the way, was how many people were there. Yeah. And I don't know, there weren't that many kids there. Yeah. It was like random. I'm telling you the sidelines yeah. were you you just you told me before I went out there you said there's gonna be parents out there with iPads there's gonna be NFL dads out there oh, there's yeah. just gonna be it's gonna be Matt and you mix. were exactly right. it was I'm talking from end zone to end zone it was two three four layers deep of yeah. people watching five year olds <laughs> yeah. play football I've never seen I, I come from a crazy football in West Texas crazy football background yeah. there was it was nothing like this no. this was insane. No. And that was eye opening for me was just how well, many people. I mean, were out where, there. especially where you're at, right? According to the parents, right? You've got Saban coming out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've got you've got all these D one coaches. You know, Kirby Smart's out there uh, recruiting yeah. these kids. I that's mean, because they're going to get a scholarship yeah. after next year, you, right? You would think some of these parents. That's oh what the, some of these parents would think is that their kids <laughs> getting a scholarship. You know, you got freaking recruiting happening, and uh -huh. yeah, it's wild. You yeah. know, the other weird thing about youth sports and and 
this is a different topic, you know, longer topic elsewhere, but the whole participation trophy mm -hmm. and don't keep score, everybody, you know, everybody get equal playing time. And I'm with all that. But what's funny is how many kids come up to me and ask me what the score is. It's like parents don't want to keep score because they don't want to make kids quote unquote feel bad. They but care. that's all these five-year-olds are asking that's, me is, hey, what's the score? Hey, we just score. We're winning right now. That's all they care. They, yeah. It's like this innate yeah. competition of yes. we want to win. Yes. So it's funny how we, you know, the last 15, 20 years, we've tried to take competition out, for the, especially for the younger grades, mm -hmm. and yet it's still in their DNA. That's, that's all they want to do yeah. is win. Dude, and it's interesting because I'm going, I'm going through this right now is, is there is a level of competitiveness that, that you need to um, – you need to embrace that come with team sports. Uh, like you said, our culture right now is participation trophy. Everybody wins, nobody loses, you know, kumbaya, right? That yeah. whole deal. But here's the thing is, is with the third graders, and this was harder for me because I just, I literally just talked about, hey guys, relax, let the kids play, give them opportunities. But there's also the other side of it that you need to teach competitiveness. You need to teach that, look, like you don't just get to show up and play as much as these other kids who have worked all off season have like, it took it really important. And I say off season, but I mean, playing catch with their dad and yeah. doing stuff like that. Right. Like, cause there's kids from last year to this year that are night and day, night and day different because like they love the game and they're mm -hmm. out running routes with their dad and they're like just playing catch at this age. Yeah. But like they have put in work and they deserve the opportunity to go out and play more. Whereas like you've got kids that can't even line up. Can't, and like when you're in third grade, you're eight years old, you're starting to get to that age where those lessons need to be taught. Where it's like, hey, listen, work does translate to reward. Mm -hmm. Like it really does. And so... I'm not going to just like bench kids all the time, but at the same time, there is a hierarchy within the team that is, is earned by the amount of work that you put in the execution that you do on Sundays. Like they need to learn that they can't just like, Oh, well, I mean, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not going to try to go memorize my formations, memorize my plays. Like I'm just going to show up and be a liability, but I still get to play as much as everybody else. Like I'm at the age with my older son that that's the case. Now with mm -hmm. kinder, like, look, just play, play everybody. Yeah. And a couple things, there's a kid, there's two kids on, on Rocco's team um, that like every time they touch the ball, nobody's ever going <laughs> to. And so I've got to fight that competitive urge right. too. Just giving them the ball. Yeah, all the time. But at the same time, um, you know, they also need to, Kinder, it doesn't really process. Like, it, look, just get them out there, mix it up as much as you can, let them enjoy the experience where they learn some skills, learn the game a little bit. But now you get into third grade, now there's life lessons that you've got to implement into the coaching and you've got to encourage. And, but as a coach, as a dad, um, you need to also communicate and talk through those things. Like if you just don't play them and you just don't, and don't communicate, listen, like here is why is, you know, little Boston has been working all season and he catches everything that we throw to him. His route, he knows his routes. He knows where to line up. He does all those things. You can, you can get and play more if you go home and work and implement. And I see a change on that. But like at the same time, it's not fair to the kids that work their tails off for the kids that don't to not to go in and play just as much as them. Yeah. And my wife had to t tell me that this year. She goes, Hey, look, you're at the age. Like if they produce and they, and they're actually, you know, performing better than the other kids, it's not fair to them right? to pull them off the yeah. field and let these other kids it's time play. to start learning that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that's one thing I'm happy with my son is that I've never forced him outside yeah. to do to want to practice or want to – I mean, he literally begs me all the time yeah. to go out and practice. And yeah. I hope he doesn't lose that. I hope that's yeah. always something that he wants to yeah. – you know, and, and that's part of, you know, these Wednesday episodes, that's part of why I want to stay in shape. I was thinking about yeah. this yesterday. We went outside. We got some flags for the house just to, you know, because flag pulling, you're right, is the hardest thing. Dude. <laughs> and so he wanted to practice yeah. flag pulling. Yeah. So we literally played our own one-on-one -on -one game, and uh -huh. it was sprinting up and down the backyard, yeah. and we played to 15, whoever got to 15 first. So I'm sitting here thinking. You and him? Me versus him. You had him. flags yeah. on? Oh, yeah. I had flags on. He oh, had flags here's on. Here's the deal, David. You know what Ben was doing? <laughs> he was literally, like, jumping over <laughs> Cooper, like, splits, hurdle, like, Saquon Barkley Dude, I jumping. I, boop, boop. I I think he beat me 15-14, but I, <laughs> I let him win. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> so no, but what I'm sitting there thinking the whole t- not the whole time, but after I was reflecting, I'm like, man, if I was out of shape, <sighs> overweight, yeah, I couldn't be out that 30, 45 minutes yeah. with my son that I would have missed out on yeah. because I am undisciplined and I can't yeah. take the time to, to, yeah. you know, right. Other things are priority in me and I, I don't make the time to take care of myself. Yeah. And so that's just uh, yet another reason to stay in shape is you're missing out on, you know, awesome bonding time with your son. Yeah. And so anyway, uh, yeah, this weekend was, was eye opening. There was a lot of, a lot of life lessons for me just in one packed in one little yes. hour of <laughs> but how fun is it though like football. when you see when you see your kid light up like, oh he loved and it and you man. see it like oh as a dad it's so yeah. fun it was so and we we did the whole you know because they're five we did the whole rotation so i think my son only touched the ball twice the yeah. whole game but man he absolutely had a like he couldn't yeah. stop talking about yeah. the game after yes. you know the rest of the day and just wanted to play yeah. so i mean it was a blast so was, i'm just i'm giving you a heads up the recruiting's coming. I'm, I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to bring you up to Salina. <laughs> bring you guys down to Prosper, I think. <laughs> so anyway, that's not what we wanted to talk about yeah. today necessarily, but I think it was, no, it was, it's, it's a good conversation to have. Yeah. Uh, because again, you know, despite as level-headed as I think I am, uh-huh. it is easy to get caught up in yeah. five-year-old flag football and, and yeah. think it's the end of the world if, you know, we don't win and I, it drew more competitiveness out of me than I expected it to. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. it's yeah. tamping down that ego. And it's, it, it is true. And, and I do have, because I had very, very little patience and empathy for those dads that are like all in mm-hmm. and like, I still don't have much, but yeah. like I'm better because like I've, I've gotten like, okay, like yeah. I get it. Like yeah. there's, you have to literally be conscious and fight that like, ego to live through these kids and that your value and and, and as a coach too right like I remember last year was the first year that like the kids started throwing the ball and like it's not just like dive and Mm -hmm. you know reverse and stuff like that um and I just remember like I felt like judged from the parents on my play calls (laughs) And I'm like, you got parents well, coming the, up. That I bet you they were judging you. Oh, 100%. 100% <laughs> that's they were. Not, yeah, that's not like you were just making that up in your head. You know what? Like parents are normally super friendly. Like after a loss, like they won't even talk to you because they're like mad at you for your play selection. <laughs> we should have done half back with a lot dive left yeah, there. But it's always Coach clutch. It's always if, if you'd have put my kid in. Yeah. If you'd, if oh, you'd yeah. have let him throw the ball. It's like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm. Lo- I, I will say this. I, I'm super lucky because the kids and parents that uh, that we've got this year and even last year, um, they're awesome, man. Yeah. And, and that's what's fun too is they're just good kids. Yeah. So it's fun. Again, it's all about what, you know. That that's part of community service, right that's there. Right. Is, that's is right. pouring into these kids and, and being positive. So that's awesome. Right. Uh, what I did want to talk about though is exercising your aging brain. So not really related to that, but as we get older, mm-hmm. keeping our brain sharp yeah, uh, and some ways that we can do that. So, so I'll ask you this on a typical day, how many minutes would you say you spend reading an actual book, pursuing a hobby, writing and, or formally learning something new on just your average day? How much time would you say you devote to that? I think I know the answer. <laughs> Is zero an answer? <laughs> well, if I do like one day for like 45 minutes, can I spread that over the week? <laughs> so three minutes a day. Nice. Yeah. No, but really though. Like yeah, I would say think- like from a hobby, from a hobby standpoint, one thing that I do a lot of is I do a lot of like drafting and sketching for like projects and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like staying sharp on math and geometry and stuff. I, yeah. I do do a lot of that. I've got like, 10 notebooks in my garage full of just drawings and projects mm-hmm. that I've worked on or, or whatever it may be. So that's like one thing that I would say like actively I stay on pretty regularly. And then, um, you know, reading it's, it's hard. It's hard because I do, we do so much. You're really good about getting into books and like, I'll listen to books mm-hmm. just because I've, I've got an hour drive one way yeah. somewhere. So I spend a lot of time in the car. So that's usually my time to like listen to that's books. That's learning something new. That's yeah, that counts. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've gone through more books in the last twelve months than I have combined the rest of my life prior to that. So, <laughs> <laughs> the last book you read was Where the Red Friend Grows. Uh, Sixth Goosebumps. grade. Carl Sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, it's it. 
I, that's something that I'm not yeah. great at. Well, I, maybe not great at it, but I would argue that you, you're actually ahead of a lot of people with the little bit, even the little, because think about how many people don't devote any, you know, we talked about this before you wake up in yeah. the morning and you're needed by somebody. Yeah. And pretty much all day long, that's what happens until you go to bed at night and you realize I did everything today for other people, which is not a horrible thing, No, no, but you didn't spend any time on yourself. Let me ask you in that category, does like learning something on YouTube, does that count? Learning something new. Boom. Okay. So I would say, I would say I'm probably a minimum of 30 minutes a day, 30 to 45 minutes a day. Now there may be, it's, it's it's like supplements, right? Yeah. There may be a 2% difference for that, sure. ver, you know, YouTube yeah, yeah. versus actually reading something. Yeah. There may be a little bit of difference yeah. in your mind, but the point is that you're, you're expanding your, your mind, you're, you're building neural, yeah. n- new neural pathways. You're, you're See, doing something different. I think, I think you need to have a conversation with Tiff because you know, when I go to the recharging station, when I get home, like, she's always like, why are you in there for so long? It's like, I'm learning something new. The car that's, takes That's forever. my time. That's <laughs> what I, I, I just learned how to mount a zero turn tire, you know, a, a whole new tire. So I mounted it, balanced it, did the whole deal. And I learned it. Just tell while, her. While I'm, at the recharging station at the house. Tell her, well, would you rather this or would you rather me be mashed potato brains when yeah, I'm 80? That's right. I'm keeping my brain sharp. Sometimes I have to take 30 minutes in the bathroom <laughs> on my recharging station <laughs> to get recharged and educated. Uh, yeah. So six ways here, if, if this is a foreign concept to you, if, if you just heard that list, you're like, I don't do any of that stuff. Here are six ways that you can exercise your aging brain. Right. And uh, why is the support? Well, it says it in the, in well, the- okay. So let me, let me, let me back up a little bit really quick. A lot of, a lot of people think that there's not much that you can do, especially once you get to 35 or more to make your brain stronger, right? Yep. We don't think of our brain as a muscle, right? You typically think of it as an organ, you know, it's your central nervous system. That's kind of, the, that's, that comes from, from, from your brain. But in reality, studies are showing that you can continue to train, strengthen your brain, strengthen mm-hmm. memory by certain things. And there's, there's a whole concept called functional neurology where there's certain movements, there's certain exercises, there's certain eye training, there's balance training, there's certain things that you can actually do to specifically trigger certain points of your brain that actually strengthens your brain. Yeah. And it's and they use a lot of this to recover from concussions um, because again, the, the CTE idea is that like, oh, once it happens, you're done. Mm-hmm. That's not true. There's, there's uh, and there's treatments too that you can do to actually strengthen your brain and actually target specific points in your brain. Ultraviolet lasers, there's certain things that you can do. So again, if you just think like, oh yeah, I'm learning, whatever, but literally learning is strengthening your brain. It's, yeah. it's firing connections that have not necessarily fired as regularly or as um, consistently, or maybe not for a long time. It is actually strengthening your brain. And why is that important? For me, it's important because yes, obviously I want to be sharp now, Yeah, but I also want to be sharp when I'm 60, 70, 80. Yeah. Not only have a good, not only have an in shape physical body, I was gonna but say. I want my mind to be in shape. With my grandmother, I watched this happen to her. She suffered from dementia her yeah. last year. So Awful. her body, she was just as functional. She could do anything she wanted to do, but her mind was not there. Awful. And now I don't know enough about dementia. I don't know enough about mm. that to know, is that a hundred percent preventable? Is that partially prevent I have no idea mm-hmm. but I do know if there's anything in my power to prevent these things yeah. to keep myself sharp yeah. I'm going to try it yeah. and I think starting with this list of 6 is a great way start now when I'm 34 <laughs> yeah. keep up with it as I get older and this will carry me into my later cuz right. I I'm scared to death of either a being in a wheelchair when I'm older and being completely you know, still having yeah. a sharp mind, but being in a wheelchair and, and I have to be taken care of yeah. or be the opposite of that Yeah, where I'm physically a- capable, but my mind's gone and I have to be taken. See, I don't want to have to be, I don't have yeah. to rely. Now, obviously when I'm maybe when I'm 98, you know, that's different, but I don't want to have to start relying on people when I'm 70, yeah. 75. Yeah. That's way too young. hundred percent. That's, and that's, that's the question is if you talk to anybody losing control of your mind is the hardest way to go because yeah. it affects so many other people as well. Um, well, then that, they just say about, a good. No, they say about stupidity. It's it's hard on everybody else, but the person who's actually <laughs> stupid. True, <laughs> true. Totally different here. This is totally different. But I was just talking to a, a good friend and a neighbor, and um, and his mom is has struggled with dementia, and she 
about a year through four months ago, they actually checked her into a facility because it was so bad. And since then, his dad has really struggled with health because I mean, they started dating sophomore year in high school. It's a soulmate, man. And, and then now she remembers him every fourth or fifth time that he visits mm. her. And that's so tough. it's, you know what I mean? So it's really, really hard. Um, so losing your mind. So that's the question that you, yeah, you may be able to, you know, bench press your body weight five times, but if you don't, yeah, if you don't have control of your mind. Yeah. And I'm guilty of this. I, I spend so much time on my physical yeah. health that I, that I sometimes neglect these yeah. things. And so, so I want to yeah, pursue hear this both. List. Pursue both. So number one, again, six ways to exercise your aging brain. Number one, learn something new. Mm. Learning a new language, taking a few classes at your local community college, or simply trying a new activity will help you build new neural pathways and reduce your risk of age-related mental decline. Spend some time pursuing a new, era, new area of interest or learn more about a skill or concept you already know. You're never too old to learn something new. Again, what I was saying earlier, how many of us on a typical day, we just, do, now, yeah, oh, I learned something new today. That's fine because it happens, it's a passive yeah. or, or it's more reactive. Yeah. But how often do we actually pursue something yeah. for the sake of trying to learn? Like, when's the last time you said, I'm gonna learn a new language and you, and you pursued that? <laughs> or I'm gonna learn how to play the piano and you pursued that. We get very comfortable in the things we're good at and just keep going in that, that routine. Yeah. It's uncomfortable to challenge ourselves mentally, physically. That's why we avoid it a lot of times. And does learning a new language at 34, is that really going to serve my life in some amazing way? Maybe. Yeah. But you, I'll, I could probably. You go to Cabo every year. Well, yeah, yeah, you better learn yeah. Spanish. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but it, I'll, I could probably okay the rest of my life never yeah. learning another language. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why we push it to the back. Because it's like, is it really going to serve me? Yeah. But if it serves me in a way of it's going to keep my brain healthy, yeah. that might Look, be worth this, it. This sounds really, really bad. I probably shouldn't say it. No, I'll just say it. But right if here. you've ever gone through a remodel at your house, you really, really <laughs> wish that you knew Spanish. <laughs> yeah, you should have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I get you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it, it, especially in Texas, yeah. right? And, and where I'm from, my, my well, hometown. I mean, yeah. I mean, we were, I really want to see this statistic the statistics because anecdotally it felt like I was a minority at my yeah. high school. It yeah. felt like Hispanics were the majority. Yeah. And so to your point, it's like where I grew up, it would have been a great skill yeah. to have yeah. is, is knowing Spanish. I mean, we had to, you and know, also that was too. And, and, and I don't say it like, Hey, yeah, but it's really like, there's so many times that I wish, like we had some conversations with one of our contractors a lot, like my wife about faith, and just his journey and story, but there was a language barrier. The father couldn't speak English, the son did, so the son was translating. Like, can you imagine being able to like, how you could do life and how you could like, and, and I, you know, for me, like how you could potentially minister and like lead and, and encourage people if you could actually connect in, mm -hmm. you know, common language. Yeah. So I just think of opportunities that I've missed because I just, uh, you, yo, Say <laughs> I'm a, you know what I mean? It's like, you're, if, if I could speak and I could connect, like, I, I think it would be, re, it would be so cool. The amount of people that it opens up communication and mm -hmm. opportunities to connect. Yeah. Yeah. I've got two great, my parents are fluent in Portuguese. Yep. They understand Spanish because they're fluent in Portuguese yep. and it's just such a cool yeah. skill. And obviously they, they go and serve in South America. So it's obviously mm -hmm. they needed to learn it yeah. and that that's helpful for them. But it's just a cool, yeah. it's just a cool skill to have. So number one, learn, so, learn something new. Number two, pursue your hobbies. So we talked about it last week, actually, the stress relief uh, that pursuing your hobbies provides, and it taps into your creative brain as well, something many of us don't do on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. Yeah, maybe your day-to-day -day job, you've got to be somewhat creative, but even us, mm -hmm. where creativity is somewhat required, how many times do we just not really think through something and we just go, go at it yeah. and just rely on old, you know, routine yeah. to make those decisions. Yeah. yeah I just think, yo, go ahead. Well, I was just say yesterday we, uh, you know, I talked about last week, went and got some paint and all that stuff yeah. yesterday. That's what we all, me and my two boys, we sat down and we painted for an hour. Mm. And so it's just this time we had music playing in the background. It's just a cool time together with each other. We're getting to be creative. We're getting to paint. Yeah. Like that was a fun moment for me Yeah. because they, cool. they enjoyed it. I love painting as well. It was just a great time and it was so good for me mentally just to be in that moment for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So 
<clears throat> similar. One thing, and not similar, it's very different, uh, but hobby-wise, <laughs> is I got into <clears throat> archery, like bow hunting, mm. right? I haven't actually bow hunted, yeah. but I got, I got a bow uh, about a year and a half ago, I guess. Um, and that is kind of my thing. And, and you talk about learning, there's so many things you can learn about it. Like, you know, how to tune your bow, how to, you know, what, what broadheads to use, you know, what your, uh, what your pull, um, poundage is, you know, I mean, there's all these things, right. With which, and I don't know very, very much, but like even just digging into that and that's kind of my stress relief is like, if I'm like in the office and it's like, I, Oh, I'll just go out and I'll shoot 20 shots. Yeah. And my kids come out, they've got a little kid's bow, and it's like, it's time that we can do that together. And one, it gets me outside. There's that vitamin D that you always talk about. But then two, you, you got nature. But then three, there's just things that's like, okay, now I've got to like, all right, I'm 30 yards out. I got to adjust my sight. Okay, breathe, calm down. I mean, it's it's very, it's it really is therapeutic. And that's just one, of the, one area that it's been really kind of cool to just say, okay, I, I got to get out. Go out for 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah, I've never done it, but I, I imagine it's kind of like painting for me, which is there's no time to be thinking about other mm -mm. things. Like you've got to be dialed in. Yep. It's a routine. It's breathing. It's There's so many good aspects to that that your your brain can't be cluttered with other things that's if right. you if you want to do it well. Yeah. So that, that's cool to, to hear you say. That's a cool hobby. Uh, number three, read a book. Reading stimulates our brain. It takes a lot of mental skills to interpret words on a page. For example, our temporal lobe allows us to recognize words and sounds, while our frontal lobe is responsible for reading fluency and comprehension. All reading can benefit the brain, but sticking with new, complex, or educational information will give you a mental workout. I think this is the separator between audiobooks mm -hmm. and actually reading a page. Agreed. Audiobooks are great, yeah. but actually having to read, actually having to, to go through work, like even just reading on this podcast for me is hard sometimes yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> because we I've got to concentrate. I've got to, <laughs> <laughs> reading is hard, right? So, but actually something about actually having to read words on a page, I mean, the benefit just of that. Think about it and, and you train yourself. Like for me, when I, when I read, I'm immediately exhausted. Yeah. Immediately. Cause again, my brain is processing. Mm -hmm. And so Especially, I can't do it at night. Like when I was doing 75 hard, that was the hardest part for me was reading because it was like. <laughs> like yeah, I had to do it first thing in the morning. Immediately, immediately I was exhausted. Yeah. And so I, I agree. I really think that there's so much benefit. And that's one thing I, I really struggle with that I need to put back on the forefront. Yeah. Well, and that's why I liked about 75 hard. It was, it was a low barrier. It was 10 yeah. pages, right? Yeah. What is 10 pages? Now for us, it took me 50 dollars. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's an hour and a half, but for a typical person, that's you're done in 15 minutes. Yeah. So maybe just set it f at five pages. Yeah. Anything's better than nothing. That's right. Right. So it's setting the barrier low mm -hmm. so that it becomes a habit that you, yeah. you know, our atomic habit series setting up. What's the lowest barrier of entry to introduce it mm -hmm. and make it a routine. Yeah. Number four, this is something I never do. Brain teasers. Logic games and puzzles are great resources for building cognition. Activities such as these work many parts of the brain, including those responsible for memory, decision-making, and problem-solving. You do not have to wait until you can sit down with a traditional chessboard or purchase a crossword puzzle book anymore either. Logic-based activities are readily available on the latest forms of technology and are found on multiple free phone apps and websites. You can train your brain today without ever leaving your chair. Yeah. That's one. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. I always make fun of uh, my wife. She played, what is it? Wordle? Is that what it's yeah. called? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's like, even that, as dumb yeah. as it is, that's that's a brain teaser. That's yep. having to think through and pick out words and, and make up, you know, combinations of letters. I mean, that's that's good for your brain. Yeah, there's there's two that I do. There's a, there's like a word game that you've got to fill in. You get, uh, you get six letters. I can't remember the name of the game, but I, I probably play it once or twice a month. But I'd play this like Sudoku um, uh, Tetris type of game where you've got to like fit these shapes together. And it's a, again, mm -hmm. it's a puzzle game. Um, and I play that one a lot. And that is something and you can tell when you're like locked into it and tell when you're not. Yeah. Because like, OK, now I'm strategizing. Now I'm building. OK, now I'm thinking through this. OK, where does this fit? Where does this not? OK, I'm thinking three moves ahead. Like you're actually like thinking through problems mm -hmm. 
while playing a game. Yeah. So, and if this is something you never do, like for me, I'm sitting there thinking that sounds fun. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably, I'm more likely to do that than yeah. sit down and try to learn chess. Yeah. So that's another good way to chess introduce you. Fun, <laughs> well, I've never, chess I've never tried fun. to play it. Yeah. But my point is like, if, if this is something you don't do and you want to get into it, it's finding a fun game like that. Yeah. that's going to encourage it. Yep. So that's number four. Number five, writing with pen and paper. This is something that in my older age, older age, I've really gotten into is writing. I, I really enjoy that because it's something that I always thought was nerdy growing up yeah. or, or just never, just always avoided. It was just like English class. But I was always, always actually, always did well in English because for whatever reason, I had this ability somewhat to write. And so it's been fun to cultivate that a little bit mm. as I get older. And right, so number five, writing with pen and paper. Studies show that writing on physical paper can lead to more brain activity when remembering the information an hour later. Research, research, researchers say that the unique, complex, spatial, and tactile information associated with writing by hand on physical paper is likely what leads to improved mm. memory. So again, kind of like listening to an audio book versus actually reading a book, typing on a computer versus actually taking a pen and paper yeah. and writing. Both are great, mm-hmm. but maybe there's an added benefit with yeah. actually writing on physical pen with physical yeah. pen and paper. Yeah, I agree. I, and I'm a big note taker. Yeah. So I write. You are a big note taker. Yeah, I write a lot, like on in a physical notebook. Well, and and you know you do that in meetings now at 37 years old yeah. when you don't necessarily have to, yeah. but you're able to now retain that information better yeah. because it, you're sitting there being memory. active. That was football for me. It was like I whether whether we're in the fifth week of training camp and we've ran through the playbook already three times, I'm still taking mm-hmm. notes because that's how it locks in my brain. Yeah. Yeah. Like that for me, that's, if I'm going to remember it, I have to, I literally have to hear it, write it down and then reread it. Well, research backs that up. Yeah. Is that, that's literally the best way to do yeah. that and remember that. And the number six, obviously the point of the, uh, these episodes while we, while we added this uh, Wednesday episode is exercise. Mm-hmm. Good quality evidence supports the use of exercise for the promotion of cognitive brain health in older adults. Exercising at least one hour, three to four days a week is associated with improved cognitive performance in older adults and without cognitive impairment. Exercise can consist of aerobic resistance training, mind-body exercises, or a combination of all the above. Improvements in processing speed slash attention, executive function, and global cognition are most stable and consistently associated with exercise participation. So that was a mouthful, but just what we've been preaching all along. Exercise helps you improve. So taking not only taking care of your physical body, but now your mental health is, is sustained as That's well. Good. So so true. I mean, it's, it, it's, like, it's almost like you don't even have to bring that up. Yeah. It's, well, that, yeah, that, that's why I threw that one at the end. Yeah. It's like, I, it's it just, goes without saying. It, it just, if you work out cognitively, you are, I, I'll, I'll only speak for myself. Cognitively, I am sharper, clearer every day that I work out as opposed to the days. And I haven't missed a weekday in a while, except last week I missed a Thursday. Mm-hmm. And I literally felt it all day that Thursday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's and wild. It's crazy the difference it's a drug, man. In, in just like the clarity that I have in the day mm-hmm. when I work out versus yeah. when I don't. So I've actually gotten to where humble brag. <laughs> I've gotten to where I do it every day. I do something every day, whether it's mobility, whether yeah. it's, a, you know, aerobic yeah. activity, whether it's weight training. I don't lift every day. Yeah. I only lift four days a week now, yeah. but the three days I'm not lifting, it's, it's mobility. It's, it's, um, cardio. You're such a savage. I know I'm, I'm a freak. It's ridiculous, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but it really does. But back Be, to the 75 it, hard deal. Right. Like it, when you had to, do I something? used to think, Oh, I have to take three days off. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. Now it's like, no, walking on a treadmill and doing mobility is not physically yeah. killing me. It's yes. actually good for me to move. Yeah, exactly. And it makes my brain feel better and it just makes yeah. the whole day feel better. Yeah. So, it, you know, we're too easy, we're too easy on ourselves 100%. in a lot of ways. 100%. Does that mean I go balls to the wall as 100% every No. Yeah. But I do something to break a sweat yeah. to keep that because again, it just makes me feel good. So, those are the six ways, six of the ways that you can exercise your aging brain. So I actually uh, came up with a challenge, which I didn't tell Tyler Ooh. about this because I wanted him to have no, no ability to back out. I wanted him to be stuck. <laughs> or just say no, because <laughs> I'm hearing it for the first time. <laughs> no ability to back up. Now we're accountable to all the, the people that are listening all right, here. All right. So here's your challenge. All right, so we just went through six ways. We're going to eliminate exercise because we already do that anyway. Okay. That's, that's already a routine. So five. The five things. So learn something new, pursue a hobby, read a book, do a brain teaser, or write with pen and paper. 
Okay. So here's the challenge. You have to do one thing from that list of five every single day for the rest of the month. Okay. You can't repeat anything until you've gone through all five. So in other words, you can't just stick to brain teasers every day for the rest of the month. Mm -hmm. You have to do one of each and everything, and you can't repeat anything until you go through What if each like, one. you do multiple You can do multiple a day? You can do multiple if you so want. You can, okay. But you have to do at least one okay. every single day for the end of the month, for so the okay. rest of the month, and you can't repeat. All right. And there's money on the line for this. Come on. And I don't care what you, you make. Throw out any number you want because I know I'm not going to fail here. I'm going to do it. So it's so in, insignificant. But the, if you fail one day, even one day, if you don't do at least one thing from this list, you have to pay me or I have to pay you how much money? What, what, what's bucks? The, I was thinking like 500, but. Dang, you rich. I, I want you to, I want to hold you accountable. I guess it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm not going to fail this. Dang. I'm worried about you. <laughs> you pay me $500 if you fail one of these things. 500. And I'll pay you 500. 500. If I don't, if I don't either. What, what's today? Or what, what, yeah. We've got about half the month left. All right. So it's. Yeah, 15th. Yeah, the 15th. So 15, 15 days. 16, there's 31 16 days. days. 31 days in August. Does today count? We're starting today? We're recording yeah, this on a Monday? Today. Yeah, today. Yeah. Well, I've already done my reading, so I'm already done. <laughs> 500 bucks, that's fair. 500 bucks. I'm not going to fail. All right. Will, you heard it. If on, what is that? September, yeah, we're writing this October. down. September 1. September 1. If you, and this is honor system, daily, I, I'm not going to, but I think there's a daily check-in. Okay. Yeah. I just a text. Gotta hey, I got it yeah. done. Yep. Maybe a picture of, yeah. of the, what we're doing. Put a picture of what? And I uh, know here's another what am I wrinkle. A picture of? You got to put it on your stories, on your Instagram stories. That's how we're holding each other accountable. All right. So if you're sitting there writing Jeez. with a pen and paper, you got to take a picture that, of it and put it on your stories. That should count as one thing <laughs> in itself. <laughs> Cause I hate social media. <laughs> It's stories, dude. It's not that hard. <laughs> Literally a picture. All right. And we can hashtag, what do we want to have? Brain challenge. Okay. Hashtag brain, brain challenge. Brain challenge. All right. Hashtag brain challenge. One, one shot. So if you're listening brain. to this, you want to do this with us? Again, Boom. it's learn something new, pursue a hobby, read a book, do a brain teaser, or write with paper and pen. And, and let's put some, let's that's throw, for 10 let's, minutes. Let's throw this list on a post and put yep. it on. The, we'll do that. We'll put that on our Instagram stories at one.shot.pod. Story. Stories. stories go away. Let's put okay. it as a post. We'll put it as a post. Yeah. So join us if you want and hashtag in your stories. There we go. Brain challenge. Yeah. Uh, one shot brain challenge. That's the way it's, one it's ours. Yeah, yeah. So one shot brain, ch hashtag one shot brain challenge. I like it. And Tyler like and I are going to do it. And, and you're going to witness on here. If one of us fails, we've got to pay the other one the, 500 bucks. The exchange of cold, hard cash. Yeah, which that's, that's a significant amount of money. Yeah, that's not small. Mama's money. not going to be happy. No, I was going to say, <laughs> I, will, I will get in a lot of trouble if I lose this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you're listening along, you want to do it with us, please, please do it with us as well. So. Uh, we'll check in next week, see how you're doing. Yeah, fair enough. On the, the August Brain Challenge. Fair so. enough. All right, cool, man. Uh, go out there and exercise your brain. Appreciate you guys so much. Uh, help us by sharing this podcast. Hopefully you learned something today. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. We will see you all tomorrow.